I think it is a really serious story. And the, the answer to whether he survives or not depends on what comes out subsequent mm. to what we've heard so far. So just to kind of recap on what we know about Zahawi, um, but shortly after he became Chancellor in the summer, it emerged that he was seemingly under investigation by various authorities. And then a tax lawyer called Dan Needle published a very lengthy uh, blog post online setting out what he believed amounted to Zahawi not paying about 3.7 million in capital gains tax. Mm. And the reason for that was basically when Zahawi in a previous life set up YouGov, the polling company, he had uh, a number of shares. He had about 40% of the company in shares. Um, and his co-founder took those shares directly, but Zahawi moved them into a um, a trust or an offshore company in Gibraltar called Bolshore Investments, um, of which his parents had a c controlling state. Now, Zahawi's argument so far is that he never benefited from the trust, um, but subsequently it seems like some sort of money has moved from Bolshore Investments out back to YouGov. So... This was all kind of exposed over the summer. He resorted to just blanket denials about everything. And then we find out last week in The Sun on Sunday that he's actually now reached a settlement agreement with um, HMRC. Uh, Zahawi doesn't give any commentary on this. He, did, he doesn't deny, but doesn't confirm the details. Yesterday, The Guardian reported that this settlement was worth about £5 million and that Zahawi paid a 30% penalty. Mm -hmm. Now, I have also been told by very reliable sources that he did pay this penalty. And that penalty is on the kind of lower end of the spectrum. It's for people who are found to have taken a, a, what's known as a lack of reasonable care mm -hmm. over their tax returns. But it is still a penalty. And that implies that this wasn't some sort of innocent, no-fault settlement. It was a, a case of he had done something which constituted a penalty. Mm. But the, the, the reality is is, to go back to your original question, we just simply don't know. We don't know what they were investigating, HMRC. Um, we don't know the exact details um, of the settlement because Nadim Zahali won't tell us. And when you have someone like Dominic Raab saying and the government saying, well, this is a personal matter, well, that, that might be true to an extent before you enter into a dispute with HMRC. Yeah. When you're a senior politician and you're in that world... I think the public, and most journalists would argue, the public have a right to know what's happened here um, and precisely how serious it is. And, and crucially, what we don't know is whether Zahawi started these discussions of HMRC when he was Chancellor. Well, of course, because that yeah. would obviously yeah. open up some serious questions if the Chancellor of the Exchequer, who's in charge, basically, of, of HMRC, is in the process of negotiating a tax dispute. And without um, asking you to sort of give away your professional secrets, mm. what's, the, what's the route that can be taken to, to clarifying this story? If Zahawi isn't going to tell us, presumably HMRC isn't obliged to tell us either. Yes, uh, that is definitely tradecraft. Um, <laughs> what I can say is just purely that I've spoken to sources who I believe to know the ins and outs, and he does seem to have paid a penalty, although I should add his, his spokespeople are not commenting on that. But uh, I think the reality is it's either HMRC or Nadim Zahawi have to come out and say. And this is going to hinder him going forward because mm. he's refused to say anything. Anytime he is the spokesperson, basically, for the Conservative Party yeah. as the chairman, anytime he needs to do media now, he won't be able to do so because all the questions are going to be about his tax affairs. I mean, is there a slide, a side sort of flick of this of Rishi Sunak himself, of course, being a very wealthy man? Wealthy people have 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 complicated tax situations. Well, there's no, there's nothing that suggests Rishi Sunak has done anything, anything improper. Mm. Presumably, his his taxes presumably will always warrant great great scrutiny as as such a wealthy man. And you know, if 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 he gets rid of Nadim Zahawi over this, and that's kind of it's pretty obvious what the next story is. It's interesting you say that. I had a very interesting conversation with somebody in Number Ten yesterday about this, and I said, "Well, where's the num what's Number Ten's position on Zahawi?" Mm. Their response is, "With you know, there's nothing to see here. His his tax affairs are a private matter." But I've spoken to a number of people in government about this, and I think the sense is that. The reason why Nadi uh, Nadim Zahawi and Rishi Sunak, well, Rishi Sunak doesn't want to go near this, is because you will remember that he was very bruised by the disclosures over his own wife's tax, his yeah. own wife's tax affairs, the non-dom status row that plagued him um, in recent months. So he's probably got that in the back of his mind too.